All right, so let's talk about running shoe lingo, specifically midsole. Piva, TPU, Eva, Shmiva, what the foam is everyone talking about? That's what we're going to demystify in this video. We'll break down all three of these foams so that way next time you're purchasing shoes, you know exactly what to shop for. <music> My name is Letty. I host the Marathon Running Podcast, but this is my YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked out my other videos, we've recently done vlogs on traveling to Kenya, but we normally do gear reviews and review marathons, etc. maybe some running tips. So go ahead and check those out. But today I wanted to do something different. I sat down today to write down some notes on a shoe that I was about to review, and I realized how difficult it is to constantly remind myself of which foam does what. And then I remember when I first started shoe reviewing that I didn't know anything about these midsole foams. So today I want to talk to you guys about those. That way next time you purchase a shoe or you go to the website and you read Piva, Eva, TPU, you don't have to go do your own research. You can just go back to this video. Maybe I'll post a little chart down there and then that way you can just see what this particular foam does because everyone just uses this lingo as if we should know what these forms do. So here goes that. All right, so let's start with the first lingo. Let's talk about energy return. Energy return refers to how much energy the foam gives with each step. The higher the energy return, the springier the foam is. Next up, cushioning. Cushioning refers to how soft or plush the foam feels under your foot. Next up, density. Density means how compact the foam is, and that is directly related to the weight of the foam as well. And then durability. Durability refers to how long the foam can maintain its responsiveness and cushioning. When you hear compression set, it means how much the foam flattens over a certain amount of time. And last but not least, the terminology supercritical foam means the modern process of injecting the foam with gases to improve the balance and the weight of the foam. Now that we have this lingo out of the way, let's talk about the first of the three foams. Again, I'm going to talk about Piva, TPU, and Eva. So let's start with Piva foam. Piva stands for polyether block amide. And take that with a grain of salt because I am not a native English speaker. So if I'm mispronouncing this, I apologize. But basically, this is a very lightweight, very responsive foam, and it provides a ton of energy return. So when we're talking about Piva foam, we are talking about elite racing shoes. Why is this foam great? It's great because it provides you with springiness, bounciness, and a feel that propels you forward. It's very resistant to temperatures, so it works just as well in the heat as it does in cold weather. And again, like I said earlier, think racing shoes. We're talking about the Nike Vaporflies, Alpha Flies, Saucony Endorphins Pros, and Mizuno NRZ Lifes, just to give you some examples. What is the downside of this Piva foam? The downside is that this foam is very expensive and the durability is not meant for daily use. Basically, it just wears down. But again, if you're in it for race day or if you're trying to get a personal vest, Piva foam is what you want in your racing shoe. All right, so next one up, TPU foam. TPU stands for thermoplastic polyurethane. It is known for its plush feel and long lasting cushioning. And if that doesn't sound like a great enough deal, why else is this foam so great? Well, because when you're running in it, that's the shoe that makes you feel like you're running on cloud. It's also extremely durable, which makes it great for runners that run high mileage weeks. But of course, with all good, there comes a downside. What is the downside? It's much heavier than the Piva and Eva foams. So you're going to be carrying a lot more weight. And with that directly related, of course, the shoe is not going to be as fast. So with that, and what type of shoes do you want to see TPU? Well, you want to see it in your daily trainers. If you're prioritizing comfort, which you probably are if you're bringing or ringing in the high mileage weeks prior to your marathons. What shoes do we have TPU in? Just to give you a couple of examples. You can see it in trainers like the Adidas Ultra Boost, as well as the Saucony Triumph. Now moving on to the next one, let's talk about Eva Foam. Eva stands for Ethylene Vinyl Acetate. Again, I'm going to put that down here so you guys can excuse my butchering of these words. But basically, Eva Foam is the foam that has been around longest. When you hear about the supercritical Eva, however, you are talking about a newer version of this foam with more bounce and less weight. 
But again, Eva, let's talk about why this foam is great. It's great because it's very affordable and it's also durable and pretty versatile. It absorbs shock effectively, which makes it great for a daily trainer. And you'll probably find it in a lot of your shoes that you own already. What is the downside of this foam that is very affordable? Well, it's not as responsive or as soft as the TPU or the Piva foam. Now, what shoes can you find Eva foam in? You can find it in the Brooks Ghost, you can find it in the Hoka Clifton, or for example, the New Balance Fresh Foam X. That's where your Eva is at. So in summary, let's go over them again. Piva foam is your racing foam. You wanna see Piva in your racing shoes for sure. TPU foam you'll find in shoes that are usually comfortable and durable. And then again, Eva. Eva is your workhorse. It's very dependable as well as affordable. And now, well equipped with this information, go check out all the shoe reviews, hopefully including mine, to see what shoe will work best for you in your near future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Till next time.